Hey guys and gals, Undead. I want to do my mid-season-ish review for Season of the Chosen for Destiny 2. This season is a solid 7 out of 10. It has some issues and I would really have liked if they were fixed this season because they're super easy. There's also a lot lacking with this season, but so far, it's also a pretty good start. We're about to enter week like 2 or 3, whatever it is. I think it's 2. It's a... Uh, no, it's three, excuse me. It's it's a pretty decent season. The new seasonal activity, Battlegrounds, it's okay. It's basically a glorified drug out strike. Um, it does have a pretty cool mechanic with the proving hammer at the end of it where you can get a bonus chest for your loot. The only problem is the way they do the hand that they handle the charges, it's kind of stupid. You have to play other activities to unlock stuff to use in this activity. I really don't like that. I'd like to be able to just grind this one activity until I'm content. The weapons themselves that you get from this event, the um, new chosen weapons, they're they're all right. The uh, Duello or whatever it is, rocket launcher with um, I forgot the name of it. It's the one where it sticks the rocket launcher. It basically turns rockets into sticky bombs, and they do massive damage. They do like thirty thousand damage on a hit, and then they do like eighty to a hundred plus thousand after like four to five seconds. It is a boss melting machine. Especially if you have like weapons of light or something like that. It is amazingly good. The actual other weapons themselves like the sniper rifle, the, the uh, far future and stuff like that. They're pretty cool. They also added some new uh, core activity weapons. Um, I've only been able to use two of them because the drop rate for them is non-existent. The, the drop rate for these items is less than 5%. One of the items as well, the drop rate for it is less than 5% for a master level Nightfall. How in the world, it, Bungie considers this a common drop. I don't know if you've ever heard the word common, but common means it's quite frequent. It's frequent to find, acquire something. Frequent or common would be like 30 to 50%. That's common. 5%, I re literally ran... 50 plus nightfalls today. Today. I was off. Today. And I did not get a single palindrome from the arms dealer. The weapons are almost non existent in these activities. If you run the activity, you should be given that particular piece of loot. With this season as well, it added a. It added the Shadow Price, the Swarm, and the Palindrome. Sh uh, the Palindrome is. It's mediocre. I've gotten one. One so far, and I immediately just threw it away because it's it was honestly it was a bad roll. Plus, I'm just not really in the hand cannons. The Shadow Price, it is a 450 auto rifle, and I don't know why in the world you guys could not have just left this as a primary. Like, what would it have hurt? Plus, 450 auto rifles are in an extremely bad place. So, there's that. Let's see. The swarm has not been added to the game yet. It will probably be added this coming week with the new re uh, with the reset. Also, the, the other weapons were added. They had one new weapon added to Vanguard, to Crucible, and to Gambit. The new um, Crucible sniper rifle. I've probably played forty or fifty games of Crucible as well, just running through whatever, just sitting there. I, I honestly, I set my controller down and put it in. Just rigged a rubber band up in my controller just to make myself move forward to see if it would, what the drop rate was. They're almost non-existent in Crucible as well, along with the new uh, the ax the third axiom or whatever for Vanguard strikes. It's non-existent as well. The bottom dollar for Gambit, I've ranked up my infamy all the way three times now, and I have yet to get a single one. The drop rate needs to be a little higher to actually experience these weapons and use them. The activities you're running to do these uh, activities and stuff like that. They added two strikes from Destiny 1 to this game, and both of them are, were my favorite from Destiny 1. Actually, they're missing one, the Undying Mind. I only liked it because it was a lot of enemies, and it was very easy to pop off with your super. The two strikes are the Devil's Lair and Fallen Saber. Fallen Saber hasn't been playable yet because, well, there was some bug that they had with the... Uh, also, sorry guys, it's like 4 in the morning. Some bug that they had with the progression or something like that. So I don't. You haven't played it, been able to play it yet. And the Devil's Lair. Devil's Lair is really, really.
really good. It was one of the best strikes in Destiny 1, it is one of the best strikes in Destiny history, and it was also one of the first strikes in Destiny. It was the OG strike. It was also the first Nightfall they ever had. And back then, it was not really a challenge. The hardest part was getting to the boss. The boss was a cakewalk. You literally just sit in a corner and spray at the boss. I had so much nostalgic flash... Um, well, just... Nostalgia and flashbacks just going like crazy whenever I got in there. You just hear just this chugging guitar. It's great. There, someone's going to make a gif of that, probably. <laughs> I wish I was that lucky. Um... And it's just this shredding, just chugging guitar and just drums. The music is just thumping. It's so good. And the boss fight is piss easy if you have a rocket launcher with the delayed explosion perk on it. Great. Um, really, really cool. And it's quite easy. I was running it as a nightfall, though. And Bungie does the typical Bungie thing. They go Salt Bay and just sprinkle in some champions for absolutely no reason but to hinder your progress. It's not fun. I can tell you right now, it's not fun. But the Nightfall is enjoyable, though, because it's a challenge, but it's not so much that you're just like, oh my god, this is crazy. This is insane. It's a good time. The actual other stuff as well in this game, I'm going to move on to something else. The Helm, it's basically like a new command center. It's, a, it's just a new area for you to sit in. It is unique, though, because it takes place in, on the tower, but it is in first person. You can use your jump ability and stuff like that, uh, your normal jump, and it actually, you can still hold your weapons. I'm guessing something's going to pop off here, or either you might have, they, they might have, uh, I've heard rumors that there's supposed to be a firing range added to this game now. That'd be kind of cool. You could go there in your firing range. The helm as well is your command center for all of your stuff involving battlegrounds. Battlegrounds are, as I said, a glorified strike. You basically go in, you fight a couple ways of enemies, you do an objective, you go fight more enemies, and then it all culminates with a annoying as crap boss fight that takes way too long to kill and is drug out by immunity phases and basically just you fighting a boss backing up the hill, spraying wildly with a minigun. That's all you do in Battlegrounds. I'm bored with it already. And you have to run six to get your daily um, completion for them for your pinnacle or whatever, or your weekly. And the problem is these things take 25 plus minutes each. It's longer than a strike, and the rewards are non-existent, and they're not fulfilling. But you go to the helm, you get your bounties, you go there, and you, you can um, unlock nodes the same as you have been unlocking for every single activity since Destiny started doing a seasonal model. A seasonal vendor, you go there, you unlock nodes on this vendor to unlock more nodes on this vendor to unlock more nodes that allows you to have an access to higher tiers of rewards. It's old already. And the problem with this vendor is it's time gated. You cannot unlock them until 12, you have to, you have to wait 12 weeks of progression time to unlock everything for this vendor. And by the time you're at the final one, from what I, I've seen someone make a time chart for it, the season will be over a week after that. So you have a week to farm your balls off before it goes away. Really cannot stand when they time gate content like this. It needs to be just added now. And as Astacross said, he's okay with someone uh, Destiny blowing their load when it comes to content. Give us all the stuff in the first month. That is how Destiny is made to be experienced. It's made to run through the content quickly, farm, take a break from it, move on for a little while, and then come back stronger mentally to prepare yourself, be prepared to play more of it. Destiny is not designed to be a game you should have to grind 24-7. That's why the light level and stuff like that and the grind, at, at this point, Bungie is farming you for time, not you farming Destiny. And this particular setup shows as well, because like I said, the the vendor is drug out. Speaking of vendors, all the vendors in the game have been updated. Shax, the Drifter, and Zavala all have a reinvented system. They got rid of the weekly bounties, and now you get weekly tier style rewards from the actual vendors themselves. You go there, you have a, a little season pass per one or whatever. It goes from level 0 to 17, and just like I said in a previous video, 
It takes freaking forever to level this thing up. You can play 100 matches of Crucible, and you will probably be rank 10. It, it takes way too long to level up. Um, but it's meant to be drug out. And the rewards range from anything from a Legendary Ingram, which gives you crap, because it always drops 30 light points lower than what your base is. And it also gives you stuff like a shader. It gives you enhancement prisms and enhancement um, whatever the golf ball things, whatever they are. It gives you materials. And I'm like, that's cool. Bungie as well also added um, certain weapons to the gunsmith now. The gunsmith is more streamlined. You hit one button, it turns in 100 weapon parts and gives you a weapon. I still think the cost for this is way too high, considering it's random, you don't know what you're getting, and that loot pool is so diluted by crap that you have virtually no chance of getting what you want. I dropped 5,000 weapon parts in there the other day, trying to get a true prophecy. It kept giving me the same crap over and over and over again. Why am I getting a year one Uriel's gift in year four? Why? It, that I shouldn't be getting that gun. Give me the this season's content. I'm trying to get a true prophecy or something like that. Give me this new content. I think the gunsmith as well should be regulated down to like either 25 or 50 because that's a 100 weapon parts turning in for a random chance at a weapon when a weapon dismantle only gives you between 1 and 4 rough, well 1 and 3 excuse me. It's The cost is way too high for what you're getting. They need to lower this down. You also need to make it so that you do not have to pay money for bounties. I don't really understand why you're trying to drain us of all our currency. This doesn't make sense to me. But they streamlined all the vendors, and it, it's nice. Bungie has also taken a page out of Fortnite's book with the seasonal challenges. You have three months to complete 12 weeks worth of challenges, and they are, they said, oh, it's something new. They are glorified bounties. That is all they are. Complete this many of this activity, kill this many of this enemy, do this many of this, do this many of that. It is the exact same thing. And what do you get for doing this? XP, legendary shards, and the bright dust that they stripped away by removing weekly bounties. If you complete this entire thing, I think they said per season, you'll get like a couple, like tens of thousands of, of bright dust. I got like 50,000 Bright Dust. I don't buy anything. So I don't care <laughs> that really I don't care about Bright Dust because I'm not supporting Bungie like that. But at the same time, it's kind of stingy. I am going to do a separate video talking about how stingy the loot is in this game. So I'll save that one for another time. This season so far, it's I'm burned out already. And the thing is, I'm burned out and I'm still farming Nightfalls because it's just something to do for XP. I am going to talk about the pre-sage mission that they had the other day. I've ran it three times now. Uh, twice, and once with a friend all the way through, second time by myself, and then the third time just to sort of memorize it so I can do it again next week. I've ran this mission a total of six times. A couple times because I kept having to restart, and um, it crashed my console. I don't know. I mean, I know my Xbox is older than dirt. It's, from 20, it's a 2014 um, Xbox One. But... This mission is some of the best content I have played in Destiny, bar none. The mission is roughly 25-ish minutes to half an hour long, and it, it gives off serious Dead Space vibes. You go through there, and you're basically, you get a distress call, and the whole mission is started from the Nightfall this week, the arms dealer, which you, in the first room you go in whenever you spawn into the Nightfall or the Strike, you kill the first group of enemies, and then a door off to your right opens up. You go out here, you fight a mini boss, and there's a distress. You inspect something on a platform, and it gives you a distress call. You go back to Zavala, and he basically says, "Hey, there's something going on out here." And the distress signal says, "Is basically saying, please send help." And the guardian in question is saying, "I offer you my rifle. Take my rifle. Do this. I'll give you the just. I'll give you my prize position. Just please come and help me." And you get there, and it's basically a haunted ship. It's great. There's stuff growling. Uh, you're hearing like skittering on the, like something back here on the side of your head or whatever. You're hearing clanging in the vents. It, it's, it's a good time. It is frustrating because it's a lot of puzzles. It took about an hour with me and my buddy for our first run through. 
Now I can do it in probably 25 minutes by myself. My second run through by myself took me about 35 or so. The longest part of the mission is the boss fight at the end, which is a drug out boss fight, and you guys know how I feel about this. I cannot stand immunity phases, and I cannot stand a, um, a drug out boss fight. If I have the opportunity and the know how to melt a boss, let me melt the boss. That's all I ask. It has a really cool mechanic, though. You kill a couple waves of enemies, and you're in this room where it's basically a giant furnace underneath the floor. And you have to hit three switches to turn the furnace off, and then you go fight him underneath the floor. The fight basically consisted of me taking a rocket, yet again with the time delay on it, firing a rocket into him, jumping back up on the top of it, letting him run over to my side, blow up, and then I run to the other side and do it again. There are three separate entrances. If you're facing the, uh, have, if you have your back to one side of the room, there's an entrance in front of you, and on either side, you basically just keep him playing tug of war. It's super easy. At the end of the mission, you go, you hear a little bit of dialogue, and you are rewarded with the weapon Dead Man's Tail, which is basically this game's version of a Jacob's Rifle. It is mediocre. It looks pretty, it looks like a Jacob's weapon, it's mediocre. I've used it in PvE, it's meh. In PvP, it's very overused. It has a place, but it needs a little bit of tuning done with it. It can two-tap Guardians, which is awesome, but it has very bad bloom. And I'm talking Halo Reach DMR-style bloom for absolutely no reason. If you're sitting here spraying at a wall, it sprays bullets in an area about this big. You have to pace your shots as well, otherwise these shots really don't register and I've found out they don't even feel like they come out of the gun. I've had my barrel directly aimed at somebody and the sights right on their head and bullets are just like, okay, yep, that missed. Yep, yep, that missed. They have ghost bullets. The catalyst is hopefully soon to come. I have two rolls, the standard roll. It, it's a randomized weapon now, which I really cannot stand randomized exotics. I already hated that with the Hawk Moon because it basically... You have to farm this and hope to God you get a good roll because it goes away after a while. And with this, you only get one a week. With Hawkmoon, you can farm it repeatedly. With this, you get one per week for a 30-minute mission. Hawkmoon can be done in 15 if you're fast enough with the team. This mission takes 30 minutes and you get one. I, I would really appreciate it. They'd make it so you could farm it continuously. I'll be honest, I am going to be farming this mission weekly because it's really fun, it's great content, and I actually enjoy doing it. It's rare that I actually go out on my own and actually want to do an exotic quest because it wasn't crazy tedious. I have a feeling that the master level one is going to be much tougher. They're probably going to sprinkle in champions, put a timer on it, and stuff like that, but you never know what the future may hold. The biggest down fall and letdown for this season is that there was no new content added to PvP. Beyond Light stripped away so much that they and they added so little back to it. There is no reason to play Crucible right now. For one, Stasis is AIDS. Trials is absolutely awful, but I'm going to discuss that one briefly in a minute. And you've added no new Crucible maps. You brought back Destiny 1 Strikes. The least you could have done is brought back some fan favorite maps. People are like, oh, but there's Twilight Gap in this game. Twilight Gap sucks. It's horrible. It is awfully balanced when it comes to spawns. You can be easily spawn trapped and stuff like that. Stasis as well ruins the entire play, well, playability of the game because you're either getting jerked around, frozen, stomped on, shattered, whatever. It's not fun. It is not a good time. And the meta is well right now in the game. Unless you play the meta, you struggle. You have to use a 120 hand cannon and a shotgun. Otherwise, you fail. Snipers are useless, and the flinch is absolutely bonkers on them at times. Because sometimes it feels like I get flinched. And the other times, it feels like I'm getting lit up, and it knocks them in the head, even if I'm shooting at their foot. Arbalest as well is still broken on console, but they've said they're going to address that. 120 hand cannons have 45 to 60 meters of range. That is scout rifle range. You need to reel that back in just a little bit. Make it like 30 to 35 meters. It's supposed to be a short to medium range weapon, not a sniper rifle. 
Pulses are in a mediocre place right now as well, and I'm going to speak on a particular pulse that I got this weekend that was pretty great from Trials. Um, shotguns and special ammo, you need to remove special ammo scavenger from Crucible. It's ridiculous if someone kills me and they're using it and they get three to four rounds of shotgun ammo and I get one to two if I kill someone. You need to remove that ability and dial back stasis some. I'm not saying completely nerf it into oblivion, but it needs to be looked at. Particularly supers like the Behemoth, who is running rampant. It has a 60 plus damage resistance to anything that it is thrown at it. It can take three sniper rifle shots to the head. Other supers can't even one tap it. Rocket launchers, it laughs them off. You need to address this. You've already nerfed Revenant into Oblivion and Shadebinder. Actually, no. Revenant needs another nerf because that super lasts way too long. And I'm a Revenant main. With the nerf Behemoth, cut the super in half by like 10 seconds and nerf the damage resistance down to normal super levels. You have a fine super then. And also make it so that whenever you spam your ability, it costs you more. Do, do, do the Arc Shredder treatment. Whenever you sit in there spamming your dodge, it just takes massive chunks out of your super bar. Excuse me for one second. I did not expect this video to go this long. And it's 4 in the morning and I'm going to 20 minute rant. Trials. You guys need to address Trials. I really was hoping it was going to have some addressing this season. The only thing you guys added was some very garbage looking armor and you added some Destiny 1 weapons. You brought back um, the Messenger, which is so good. It, I have a garbage roll. Mine comes with Moving Target and Celerity, which is one of the worst perks in the game. And this thing shreds. I've seen people talk about the Outlaw or and Desperado or Rapid Hit and Desperado roll on it. It's very, very overpowered. Not strong, it's overpowered at how fast this thing is because Bungie can put you through balance out the window. Which the Messenger was a killer gun in Destiny 1 as well. I uh, never had the opportunity of getting it, but I knew friends that had it and I got to see it put in work. It's great. If you don't know what it is, it's basically in the same vein as a Regic uh, Broadsword slash Claymore. And whenever you get Desperado procced on it, it basically ramps your gun up to like a 600 something round gun or whatever. Or, or, or was it 540 or whatever? It, I forgot the archetype. It's a max out fire rate gun and it is great. Really, really fun gun. I got it basically in a bad manner. I just pretty much threw myself off the edge for... 10 games <laughs> that's it you can just throw 10 games and even the guys we were playing against are like gg man thanks for the win and i'm like yeah buddy rock on it's great um trials is in a bad state if it's so bad that the only way that i'm wanting to farm weapons is to kill myself repeatedly instead of putting the time in to the playlist it's you know it's bad trials came out half baked a long time ago and it's just still sitting there on the counter at this point, just scrape it in the trash. You need to get rid of Trials. Either get rid of it or fix it. Bungie announced the other day that they're actually upgrading their studio size. Awesome. Good for you. Maybe you can get some new management, some new leadership, because Luke Smith needs to go. You get rid of him. What do you guys think of this season so far? I'm leaving some things sort of for you to find out if you do play it. I'm enjoying it. It's a solid, like I said, it's a 7 out of 10. I'm waiting to see what else they have coming out with it. Because um, rumor is they're supposed to have uh, more of the Earth added to it. More of the Cosmodrome. And we're supposed to be getting a couple new missions in this. I I'm, I'm having an okay time. They also, on one final thing, they brought back the Umbral Ingram system. But it sucks because the drop rate on them is so low. And... You have to level up so much crap. In order, you, it's time getting as well on leveling your Umber Ingrams up. Because you have to get so many kills with so many guns to even unlock the ability to unlock a certain gun from the Prismatic Recaster. It's really annoying how much time getting crap they have in this particular season. But it's, it's a good time. You notice as well I didn't mention the story because I don't care about the story in Destiny like that. I'm, I'm not Bife. I'm not a lore master. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, though. If you're enjoying it, um, if you like to play sometime, I'm on Xbox. Just ask me for my gamer tag. It's rare that I ever even mention it. 
because um, I don't like being trolled. But that's it for now, guys. If you enjoyed this, a like and a sub would be appreciated. If you did make it to this video and you're a returning viewer, thank you very much for sticking around. And if you are new here, feel free to hit that sub button. It's free, and I promise you I will be putting out more great content, in my humble opinion, in the future. But that's it for now, y'all. Stay safe. Don't do anything stupid. And I will see y'all later. Peace.